Good morning. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Welcome to Glen Island Park, Glen Island Beach. This is the beginning of Independence Day weekend. And uh, here in Westchester County on the first day of July, we are ready for uh, the summertime, and the summertime is ready for us. We have a gorgeous day at hand here on this day, the Friday that begins the weekend. And we're here again, as I've said, at Glen Island Beach, where the early birds are starting to come out, getting ready for a day of sun, the day of water. And uh, we're ready for a weekend that involves uh, people enjoying themselves all across Westchester County, whether they're in the beach, uh, at a pool, or in their backyards. And we wanted to go over some of those things as we enter the summertime that will be helpful for you to know. Uh, I'm joined here, as I always am, by our Deputy County Executive, Ken Jenkins. We have two of the members of the Westchester County Board of Legislators that are with us, Terry Clements, who represents New Rochelle and Pelham, and James Nolan, who represents part of Yonkers and the village of Bronxville. And of course, uh, all of us in the general government are anxious to make sure that we see the best of our parks and our beaches and our pools, as this weekend will be one where they get lots of people to come and visit and be part of it. Uh, we will be hearing from Kathy O'Connor, who's our commissioner of the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Conservation. And she's going to talk about our parks, our beaches, and our pools that are open uh, and uh, that we hope you'll be able to enjoy this weekend and throughout the course of the summer. Then we have our commissioner of health, Dr. Charlita Amler, who will talk about some very important issues like sun safety, uh, drowning prevention, all of the things that will keep you healthy when you enjoy the great outdoors in our parks. Next, Sergeant John Butcher who is with the Westchester County Department of Public Safety, is going to talk about boat safety, fireworks safety, and the consequences of not being safe in those uh, environments. And then we have our Assistant Commissioner for Public Health, Peter DeLucia, who's going to talk about barbecue and food safety. And we shouldn't underestimate that if you're having people over, you want to follow the proper uh, techniques to make sure that all of your guests are healthy as they uh, enjoy themselves with food and so forth. This is a marvelous weekend. It's the weekend that we celebrate our independence, uh, gained almost 250 years ago, and it is a celebratory weekend. It is also uh, when we have good weather, and we hope to have good weather for most of the weekend. Uh, Monday is the official federal holiday. It also happens to be Independence Day, July 4th. So we have today, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, uh, for which we expect to have a heavy attendance at our various parks. We look forward to seeing all the families come out and enjoy the park system, which Westchester County has made available over an extended period of time. We are the stewards of these parks, those of us who are in public office right now, to make sure that they're available to you and that you can enjoy them. Uh, so what I'd like to do first is ask Kathy O'Connor, our Commissioner of Parks, Recreation, and Conservation, to sort of give us the rundown of the various major parks, the pools, the beaches that are open, and uh, a little bit about some of those logistics. Kathy? Thank you very much, uh, George. Uh, I really am excited to be here. July 1st, here we go. And it is perfect weather, as the county executive mentioned. Um, I have the distinct honor of being in charge of a department that never stops working. And right now, you're looking at a beach and a facility that was absolutely annihilated with Sandy, and then once again with Ida. And we've come back strong. The superintendent is Roberto Alcantara, who takes a real personal interest in keeping this facility uh, absolutely beautiful. I think the beach is as nice as some of the beaches at our local uh, you know, um, beach and tennis clubs in Westchester County. So that being said, we are open now seven days a week. We are open uh, from 11 o'clock till 6.30 p.m. starting Tuesday, July 5th, uh, Monday through Thursday at all our pools and our two beaches. Um, the, the, uh, admission will be free. Where we still charge for parking, they will still have to pay for parking, but getting into the pool or the beach will be free. Uh, that was an initiative established by the county executive who is always so tremendously supportive of the Parks Department. It's a pleasure working with him. And uh, due to the fact that gas is so high and all the things that people are dealing with, this was something that the administration came up with. Uh, to provide an outlet for people during uh, the hot summer. So we're very excited about that. Croton Point Park is open on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, but this beautiful beach here is open seven days a week, uh, as I mentioned, and so do all the pools. We have beach uh, pools at Sprain Ridge Pool in Yonkers. We have Saxon Woods Pool at White, in White Plains. 
Wilson's Woods wave pool is under construction right now. We had some damage done and they're working on it, but the facility is still open. It is free. And there are three uh, structures that young children can certainly appreciate. So Wilson's Woods is open. And then Tibbetsburg Park is our winding lazy river. That is also open too. What I would ask you as the commissioner, uh, our lifeguards are our lifeline to all of these facilities. My hat is always off to them. These are not easy jobs. It's hot. We have a lot of people that come out. They don't always want to listen. But please, we're asking you to respect the rules and regulations that are laid out for you uh, to keep you ha to, for you to have a good time and you leave happy, healthy, and safe. Uh, so the lifeguards are truly people to be um, applauded and uh, we look forward to it. We also still need lifeguards, so if you know of anyone that is still interested, we actually hire 15-year-olds. They go through all the same rigorous training. Our Red Cross, we are a Red Cross award-winning lifeguard organization, so we're very proud of our lifeguards. So on that note, we would just ask the public to be patient. There are lines coming in. Uh, we can't move any faster than we do. Uh, even though it'll be free Monday through Thursday, you still have to go through the ticket booth. You will get a ticket. We have to keep the numbers. Uh, we have to know who, how many are coming in because we do work very closely with the Department of Health and we thank them for all their help, but we know our capacities. So um, on that note, thank you. We look forward to seeing all of you out in our parks, and, and our other facilities are open, too. Golf is very, very popular. Uh, our nature centers are open, and you can just go out. We're still doing Bicycle Sunday, not this Sunday, but for the rest of the Sundays in July, and then we pick it up again in September. So thank you to everybody. Uh, thank you for all the staff's uh, support, and happy Fourth of July. Thank you very much. That's Kathy O'Connor, who is our Commissioner of Parks, Recreation, and Conservation. Next, Dr. Shalita Amler, who is our Commissioner of Health, will join us. She will talk about sun safety and also uh, the prevention uh, against drowning. We've seen some uh, cases around the metropolitan area of people that have gotten into situations that they could not handle, and they have lost their lives. And so we want to prevent that uh, every weekend here in Westchester County and, of course, beginning with this weekend. So, Dr. Shalita Amler. Dr. Amler. Thank you. So, of course, it wouldn't feel like summer without days spent at the beach or the pool, and it's so beautiful here today, and we're so happy that everyone is joining us. Families should always designate an adult to watch children in water. We have looked at a lot of drownings that have occurred in pediatrics, and what you almost always find is that there were a lot of adults present but because you have a lot of adults present, people feel like the other person is watching the children. So when you have your children beside a pool or at a beach, the person who is watching them needs to know they are the designated person. And if there are more than one person can watch, then of course you can have multiple people designated, but they need to know what children are their responsibility to watch. And that's true whether you're in a backyard pool or if you're at a vacation rental, a hotel, a water park or a beach. That person who is designated should never take their eyes off the kids. They need to know where those children are at all times. Lifeguards are really there to watch the water. They're there to watch everyone. They're not there as babysitters for children. So we need to give them a handing helping hand and make sure that you've got somebody designated to watch your children. Children unfortunately are really drawn to water and accidental drownings can happen in a matter of seconds. Drowning is the leading cause of unintentional or accidental death in children aged one to four, the major cause. The second most common cause is in children ages five to 14. So as you can see, drowning is a major cause of death, accidental death in children, and it's totally preventable. And these statistics are coming to us from the Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Another important uh, clue I would like to give, or tip I would like to give people is 
in protecting themselves against skin cancer. So you should remember to always apply sunscreen with a broad UVA and UVB protection with at least a sun protection factor or an SPF of at least 15. No sunscreen will block all the UVA rays, but the highest uh, SPF does not, and the highest SPF does not mean that you can stay in the sun longer. So you can't just put, keep putting sunblock on and say, I'll stay out all day because you're still going to get burnt. But it will certainly protect you better than not wearing sunscreen at all. If you add sun, uh, sunglasses and a hat for extra protection, um, that's really great. I would strongly recommend it because sunglasses can protect your eyes from the UV rays uh, and reduce your risk of cataracts later in life. There is actually no safe way to tan. Tanning is actually an indication that your skin is being damaged by the sun. We all love a good tan, but it's not very healthy. So even when it's cloudy, harmful rays can still reach us. So you don't want to overdo your outdoor exposure and try to avoid the sun at midday like we're seeing right now. People with lighter skin and hair like me are at great risk for skin cancer including melanoma, which is the deadliest form. Also, people with light-colored eyes are at great risk. So, as I said, you want to get a sunblock, and here's just an example. I always like to bring examples. I don't recommend any particular product. You're more looking for the, uh, the sun protection factor, which is the, it usually will be listed, and it will be a number, uh, and you want, want it to say at least 50. I'm very fair. I always use at least a, a 50 instead of 15. It can also come in a spray can. This one is a 70. So just, just try to find something that's going to give you uh, some degree of protection. And as I said, hats are always a help. So when it's hot also, we want to make sure that we don't get heat exhaustion or heat stroke. Heat exhaustion is a real concern especially for seniors, young children, people who are overweight or those who have high blood pressure. People who work outside, in and around other hot environments are most at risk. So what are the signs of, of a heat stroke or heat exhaustion? Heat exhaustion would be headache, nausea or vomiting, dizziness or just feeling excessively tired, as well as having cold, or cool, moist, pale, or flush skin. Anyone who's suffering from heat exhaustion needs to move out of the sun and apply a wet, cold cloth to their skin. At this point, I also want to remind everybody that this is not the time to leave your child or your pet in a car, even if it's just for a few minutes. The interior heat of a car can rise to 150 degrees in literally seconds to a minute. and you could unfortunately, you know, the pet or the child could die if they're left in, the, in that hot car for any length of time. Also, children can get caught up with playing and they forget to drink. And I would say that's true of adults too. And, you know, um, the, best, the best thing to drink is not alcohol. It's not even a Coke. The best thing to drink when you're out in the sun is plain old water. That's going to do the best for you. So just remember to take frequent breaks from being in the sun, drink lots of water to avoid heat, exhaust, heat exhaustion, and remember your sunscreen. And I hope you have a wonderful, happy and healthy summer. Thank you. I guess I can take all of this. Thank you, Shalita. Well, as Dr. Amla was talking, I was doing my own personal checklist. Wear a hat. Oop, forgot to do that. Wear sunglasses, yeah, forgot to do that. Make sure before you sit out in the sun for any length of time you have sunscreen on, forgot to do that. So let's not do what I did and be a little more prepared for uh, how we go through the weekend. And I might add, uh, the issues about drowning have a personal resonance to me at this particular beach. In the summer of 65, I was a little kid, 11 year old kid, I was horsing around, I do not know how to swim and I did not know how to swim then. And uh, I almost uh, didn't get beyond that, that um, that particular visit to Glen Island. So I'm fortunate that I'm standing here today back at this park all these years later. Don't let that happen to you. 
Don't do the things I've done so far today. Get those things checked off on the list, as Dr. Amler suggests. Now, there's also another level of safety that comes from being out on the water, uh, and that is boat safety. And uh, also, uh, in this uh, setting, when the sun goes down, fireworks start up. Not just the planned fireworks at different locations, but the, uh, the little illegal fireworks that go on in neighborhoods. Assuming that none of that happens this year, Sergeant John Butcher from our county PD still has important advice for us on what we should do for boating safety and for firework safety. Sergeant Butcher. Hi, everyone. Uh, we just wanted to uh, make sure that everybody has the opportunity to safely enjoy the county parks over the weekend. It's a great time of year. The weather's supposed to be good other than maybe Saturday. So we would like to you know, have everybody come out and enjoy as much as possible. We do want them to do it safely. Uh, we will have a full complement of staffing of our uh, police officers who are assigned to parks as well as our seasonal park rangers. You can identify them there in the, uh, the light blue polo shirts. Uh, in light of the, uh, the world we live in, we do want to remind everybody if you see something, say something. So if something seems odd to you or seems out of place, please don't hesitate. We'd much rather that you grab one of our uh, seasonal park rangers or one of our police officers and report it and let us look into it uh, rather than have it turn into something that, you know, in hindsight, we wish he'd had the opportunity to look into. Uh, as far as water safety, the county parks has lifeguards, so please don't swim in an area that doesn't have a lifeguard. Uh, they're there for a reason. You know, very easily uh, with heat exhaustion and unfortunately intoxication for people to get into situations that they may not be able to get themselves out of. So staying in the designated swim areas where the lifeguards are is, is crucial for your own safety. Uh, speaking of swim areas, transitioning to boating safety, we want to remind boaters that uh, if you are out up on the water this weekend, to please be mindful of the designated swim areas. Boats are not permitted to enter them at all for any reason. The fireworks displays that the county executive mentioned throughout the parks, there will be several that are on the water. We want to make sure that anybody who's planning on attending a fireworks demonstration on the water is reminded that there is a 500 foot uh, safety zone around any barge or launch site and boats are not permitted. If boats do in intrude into that, uh, it will delay the show. So please make sure that when you're trying to get your spot for your fireworks, that you're mindful of that 500 foot safety zone. The fireworks that we have throughout the county at uh, Playland and Kensico, as well as other municipal displays regarding in particular the Kensico dis fireworks, uh, we do want to remind everybody that the best way to stay up to date on information for it is to download the Westchester County Police Department app available in both the uh, App Store and the Google Play Store. We will be providing real-time information and updates as far as uh, parking and timeline throughout that. So the best way to obtain that information is throughout there. As far as people who choose not to participate or view one of the professional displays. We do want to remind everybody that fireworks are still illegal in Westchester County. Um, Westchester does not uh, allow it. So there are consequences that come from that. Uh, so please don't find yourself in a situation where you face potential legal ramifications or uh, unfortunately injuries as well. I believe that covers everything. So thank you very much. See you. Thank you, Sergeant John Butcher. And uh, also, let me add that when we have days in the summertime where we get very humid days, generally by late afternoon, 4 o'clock in the afternoon or so, we often see a very intense rain shower that happens as the weather patterns go. That may or may not happen this weekend. It will certainly happen on some summer day or some summer uh, weekend day ahead. And when that intense rain happens, we often get so much rain in a very short period of time that some of our roadways, notably the Bronx River Parkway, close almost immediately. You could drive through at 2 o'clock and it's fine, and by 4.30 uh, the road is closed for a certain period of time. Sergeant Butcher's colleagues in the County Police Department will be policing our parkways, which are the ones that are most subject to flooding. Please follow their directions. If they've closed the road, don't try to go around it and think that you can negotiate high water. You don't necessarily know the depth of what's ahead of you. Uh, the police is, are, are structured to provide safety on the roadways, particularly during the summer when those flash floods occur. 
and uh, Sergeant Butcher and his colleagues will be there to help all of us uh, get through those moments. Next, I'd like to bring up Peter DeLucia, who's the Assistant Commissioner for Health. Peter was the fellow that taught us how to wash our hands during COVID. Just in case we didn't really know how to wash them properly, he set us straight, and he's, he's provided the uh, advice for how to make sure we barbecue correctly. Now, everybody thinks they know how to barbecue, but you want to make sure that you do it right so that you don't have any public health issues that come out of that. And Pete is exactly the right guy to give us a checklist in that area. Pete DeLucia. Thanks, George. Thank you, Pete. Appreciate it. Wow, can't ask for a better setup than that by uh, the county executive because the first thing I want to talk about is washing your hands. If there's the most important thing you could think about for public health, we always like to send this message is to have properly washed hands. Now, how do you properly wash your hands if you're out at the, the beach or out at one of our wonderful county parks? Um, you know, bring some alcohol-based sanitizer. That is something that you should do before you barbecue and in between any time if you have to use your bare hands to touch some raw meat. I really don't want you to do that, but if you do, before you touch anything else, kind of hit that alcohol-based sanitizer again, and, and that's going to do you, you know, a, a world of good. Um, next, you know, we're out here on a beautiful day. It's very warm outside, and that's typically going to be the way it is when you're out barbecuing, whether it's at your own home on your deck or out in the, on the backyard or out of one of our county parks. You want to keep your perishable food, or your, what we say is your potentially hazardous food, you want to keep that cold. And the way to do that is have a proper cooler, a nice cooler that properly is sealed. Make sure there's plenty of ice in there. And the other thing I want to make sure you think about is not to cross-contaminate anything. And what I mean by that is any of your raw food might actually get on prepared food. Maybe you have some salads or me, I'm going to have mozzarella and tomato or stuff like that my wife's going to make me pack, and I don't want to have any raw chicken juices dripping on that. So if I can have a separate cooler with my salad, my mozzarella, any kind of prepared things, cold cuts, maybe a sandwich, have that in a separate cooler. Have your other cooler designated for your raw food so you don't have to worry about contaminating that next thing is we want to worry about cooking our food so we have a nice hot barbecue right just because it's super hot doesn't mean the food's going to maybe cook really really quick you want to make sure you get it to the right temperature now i don't have the full bag of tricks that dr amler brought with her but i did bring a thermometer this is a simple little zero to 220 thermometer you can pick it up at your grocery store you can pick it up on amazon probably uh, you know i'm not going to endorse amazon but i mean you can get it probably within 24 hours maybe the same day um, but this is a great little thing to have so you can check that you cook your food to the right temperature for poultry you're cooking your nice barbecue chicken you want to get that to 165 degrees you want to cook your regular steaks and all 145 is fine with that sausage and things like that pork items 150 but i don't want you to have to remember all this you could go to our website at www.westchestergov.com. Go to the health department page, look for barbecue safety or home food safety, and you'll see all those temperatures and all those wonderful tips there. Now, you prepared all this food, everybody's eating. You know, I, I tell you, I've gained a little weight during COVID. I'm gonna keep eating for the barbecue season. I gotta watch it a little bit, but you know what? You're gonna have leftovers. And if you have leftovers, you wanna make sure you pack them correctly. And in a day like today, if it's, you know, in the 70s, 80s, you know, you can worry, it could be two hours. The food could be out there and then you could pack it away, you're okay. If it's 90 degrees or hotter, really an hour or more, you don't wanna go beyond that. Just, you know, when in doubt, throw it out. And last but not least, you know, we've got a lot of little critters in these in these parks, whether it be raccoons or squirrels and things like that. Make sure you throw away your garbage correctly. Either bring a separate bag for your garbage, pack it up and dispose of it at home, or find a proper receptacle and throw out that garbage because we don't need to have any of these little visitors causing problems around here for you and your family. That being said, you know, have a great and happy, healthy 4th of July and a great summer. And I'll turn it back over to our county executive. Thanks, Pete DeLucia, for the very common sense advice. Let's hope we all practice it and follow it. Uh, now, we have uh, elected officials in Westchester County who on a weekend like this turned out to be the ambassadors for the county. They are the people that you will see at your local parks all across the county area. By, uh, by day, they are Westchester County legislators. They are a separate branch of government, and they uh, have uh, official authority uh, within the government. But on a weekend like this, you can expect to see one or more of them at one of the various parks. And, and as representatives of county government, they're friends and neighbors, but they're also going to try to make sure that we do all the things that we know we have to do. So I'd like to ask Terry Clemens from New Rochelle, Jim Nolan, uh, James Nolan from Yonkers to join us here in a few words on this weekend. Terry, James, please. Thank you, County Executive. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I encourage everybody to come out, but definitely don't do what I did and show up in a suit today because it is too beautiful out, too hot to show up in a suit. Uh, I am 
proud to be on the parks committee where we get to work with the parks department and county executive's office uh, hand in hand to make sure that they do an excellent job, which they always do. Uh, but we encourage people to come out, enjoy the summer, enjoy the weekend, but make sure to have a safe holiday and a safe summer. So thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. I'm Legislator Terry Clemens. I'm very excited to be here. I'm also the Chairman of Public Safety for the Board of Legislators, but more importantly, I'm an educator. And this is the first year that all the kids have been back because of COVID. They're back in school the whole year, and they were excited about summer break this year. They were looking forward to it. Make sure you take all this advice that was given today. Make sure you keep your eyes on the kid, keep them hydrated, and make sure you, make, you have them come over and keep that uh, sunscreen on them it's very very important and I look forward to seeing all the students back in school in September telling me all the great fun they had over the summer thank you so much now as we close out I'm gonna ask Ken Jenkins our deputy county executive to join me at the microphone so without recapping the advice that we got specifically uh, we've got advice about how to be careful as we're doing backyard barbecuing and the types of things we have to watch out for to make sure the food's properly cooked. We've been given advice about how to prevent uh, accidental drowning and, and how to take care of ourselves with boating safety. Also to be sure that uh, the fireworks circumstances are done properly so that we don't have any tragedies through that. Uh, we've been given very practical advice about wearing a hat. You can see Ken didn't do that either, <laughs> but he did have the glasses nailed. So we'll let's give him a, a, a credit for that one and uh, the thing with sunscreen that we all have to have. So bottom line is there's some very practical suggestions that we have to have as individuals. As a county government, our, our uh, four pools are open. At, at Wilson Woods, we have use of three of our four things. We do not have use of the wa wave pool as of this weekend. We will give you further announcement when that's available as to when that will be back online. The other three pools are up and operative. Uh, we also have two beaches, Glen Island and Croton Point Park Beach. Uh, that'll be open this weekend and then, and then Glen Island going through the week ahead. We've mentioned that the cost of getting into the pools and the beach during the week has been suspended. That's a decision that we made at the executive level to try to help deal with the economic problems, the inflation that we're facing. Uh, we don't want to take uh, for granted how tough it is for people to make ends meet. And so free beeline buses and the other things that we're doing, we're adding this to that mix. You should be aware that Playland Amusement Park uh, is still owned by Westchester County, but we do not manage it operated every day. Standard Amusements is the operating entity. They're responsible not only for the amusement park, but for the beach. And they also have uh, protocols in, in, uh, at hand. If you're going to Playland, aside from who's managing it, expect there's going to be traffic coming off of uh, I-95 to get onto Playland. Uh, they do plan um, uh, various uh, fireworks over the course of the weekend. You would be wise to go on to Playland uh, park, look for it online and get the information that Standard has made available so that you can interact uh, with uh, Playland. But again, we're responsible these days for Glen Island and for Croton Point and the four pools. That is our focus of our responsibilities in county government. And I want Ken just to say a few extra words and then we'll take any questions from the press. Thanks, George. Um, as, as was stated, and again, it's so critically important because on a great holiday weekend, while we're celebrating our country's um, founding and Independence Day on July 4th, we want to make sure everyone is as safe as possible. So all of the information is important, especially those folks that don't think it applies to them. I know for, for me, my glasses just turn <laughs> on the sun. That's just something that happens. But the, the reality is whether it's sunblock or sunscreen, it doesn't make a difference if you're fair, as Dr. Amler was saying, or if you're darker skin like myself, sunscreen is sunscreen and everyone needs it because everyone gets burned in the sun. So make sure that we're careful. And again, keep watching the children and everyone with the heat. Make sure you hydrate because it could take a couple of seconds to turn a really great weekend into something tragic. So we want to really, really continue to echo that point. Again, keep enjoying all of the fantastic park system. Thank you so much for coming. County Exec, if you take some questions now. Thank you. Thanks very much. I will make one final comment, and that is COVID is still with us. It has not disappeared. Uh, so take uh, prudent um, uh, precautions when you believe you're going to be in close quarters, generally indoors. Uh, masks are not mandated, 
but they may be advisable given a cer certain set of circumstances. You'll have to be the judge of what makes sense. If you are of advanced age, if you have an underlying health uh, condition, or if you are not vaccinated, be aware that you are more vulnerable to the disease than those who are fully vaccinated. Anyone can get it. The severity of it generally involves whether or not you've been vaccinated. Uh, but the bottom line is keep that in mind as well. But, but we are going to go through uh, our summer and try to have a good, solid return to normal summer to the best of our ability. So let's open it up to any questions. We have our friends here from News 12. We have other friends with us. If there are no questions at the moment, you're welcome to give us a call. Uh, our communications department at 995-2932. And some of the people who have spoken are probably interesting people to talk to uh, to get greater detail about what's happening uh, for food safety and uh, security. So feel free to do that. I'm glad that we're here to start the weekend, but I have to go back to work. If you don't have to go back to work, come to one of our parks. Have a great weekend here in Westchester County. I'm County Executive George Latimer. Happy Independence Weekend.